when you are consecrated, God will use you as a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. You will become useful to the master and prepared for more good works in the days to come. Can you say hallelujah? Now I'm going to say something which may seem a little controversial, but I need to say it as your pastor. Hornbill is coming. And a lot of things in these Hornbills festivals are not godly. Some things are good. The things which are for the artisans, the things which are for tourism, the things which are for the culture, it is good. And we need it. The things which are for entrepreneurship. But there's a lot happening in the music scene which is not good for young people. And the message of consecration applies here. To musicians and also to us who may be tempted to go to many of these music places which are ungodly. Listen with the right heart. Amen. The message of grace does not mean everything is okay. Hallelujah. See, as a musician, God has given gifts and talents which are from God. Now we can use, I'm just using this illustration. I'm not targeting the musicians. I'm just using this illustration, but this is something which we can identify with. Any one of us, your lawyer skills, your speaking skills, your preaching skills, organizing skills, you see, it all comes from God. And God's desire is that all of us, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, we do it to the glory of God. Can you say the glory of God? So when we use our gifts and talents, in the case of music, to sing the words which are full of sin, carnality, fleshly, promoting an immoral lifestyle, in places of iniquity, where sin abounds freely, must think is that glorifying God or is that glorifying the self is that glorifying the evil one because when we using our gifts and the talents in the kingdom of God do not consecrate our gifts and the talents for God what happens in course of time the danger is that we will become a vessel of dishonor what does it mean? It doesn't mean God will judge you and, you know, uh, you have lost your salvation. No. But what it means is that the grace and the favor of God will be missing on your life in time. You will not be useful to the master and you will not be prepared for more good works to come in the future. Now don't feel, musicians, that I'm targeting you. By saying this, I'm not prejudiced against anyone, but this illustration seems to be the best because of the Hornbill Festival which is coming up. And this is even for those through media. We cannot use the same gift one day for God in the church and the next day for Satan. Amen. We, we see, when we sing of lyrics and, okay, we're not singing heavy metal anymore and we think only heavy metal was, you know, the music for the devil because they talk openly of the devil. A lot of rap, a lot of pop is filled with fleshly, immoral culture and the wrong spirit. Yes. And when we promote such through our own platforms and organize those things, what are we doing? Are we really being consecrated for the purposes of God? Yes or no? No. Hallelujah. That is not consecration. We cannot be worshiping God one day on church and using the same gift for the enemy the other day. That is not consecration. Can you say hallelujah? If we will consecrate ourselves to God's purposes, cleanse ourselves from fleshly and carnal pursuits, and even the Bible says here, verse 23, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Cleanse yourself from those ignorant and foolish disputes. One dispute that I need to talk about here is a lot of musicians posting about how they need to be rewarded for the gifts, their talents, and their time. 
You see it a lot in social media, prominent musicians putting up that the musician need to be uh, rewarded, need to be, um, you know, recognized, and they need to be paid. Now, I support that absolutely 100%. All right? Musicians need to be paid for their time. Musicians need to be paid for their gifts and their talents. Amen. But it is when you are having a show, you are having a production, and you're having a concert. Those are the places, if you are organizing, or if they're organizing, and if they are charging a fee, you must honor that and buy the ticket and go to the show. Or buy their music album. Don't do pirated stuff because you are stealing from musicians if you're listening to pirated music or even pirated movies. The Lord spoke to me once and then I learned my heart. I learned the lesson in my heart. When you are using a pirated movie or pirated music, you are not honoring that musician. You are stealing from that person. So buy the CDs. Buy the tickets. If you're organizing a show, make sure you remunerate them properly. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's a difference between worship to God and a show. There's a difference. And if you don't understand the difference, it becomes foolish and ignorant dispute. In a church, when everyone serves voluntarily, on a Sunday, the ushers, the greeters, the volunteers serving voluntarily, and everyone coming out of their own heart, they want to serve God. Why? Because we are one body and one family. My son doesn't ask me money to be a son. The hand is not asking money from the body to be a hand. See, I'm feeding you every day. Make sure you pay me. No. We are doing it because we are one body. And it's a service to God through a heart of love and service unto the Lord. But if we bring that same understanding into the church, and we start thinking, because I serve in the church, I should be paid, I should be monetarily rewarded. That is wrong thinking. That is foolish, ignorant dispute. Everyone serves voluntarily in church. It is God who rewards. It's not the church who rewards. We say thank you. We do the best that we can. Hallelujah. But it is God who rewards. And I've seen in the ushers group here in our church, God reward the ushers over the years with jobs and with careers and other things. Amen. Because everyone does it as unto the Lord. Are you following me? Amen. So there's a difference between what is worship unto the Lord and the difference between shows that you do outside. Hallelujah. See, when we invite musicians into our church, we always make sure we give them something. But if you are a son of the house, we expect that you want to serve God out of your own heart. So don't confuse those arguments here within the church and create strife. Are you following me? Amen. You see, in the end, the whole body is called to ministry. All of us are called to ministry. Hallelujah. You see, God wants us to become vessels of honor. That means we are consecrated consecrated and I see even in India there's an explosion of worship music that God is going to release I see it already amen because the force of the Christian um, activities in a sense is moving to the east China um, Asian countries you know great activity great revivals uh, great leaders great impact Great resources coming up from the east. And India is going to be also playing a vital role in the days to come. But the ones that God uses, as we have seen throughout church history, is the ones, the ones that God puts his spotlight, the one that God lifts up, is usually through the path of obedience and consecration. It's not just the gifts and talents alone. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, the popularity that comes from the world should not be seen as a sign of favor from God. Amen. Even the devil can cause people to favor us. 
Consecration comes before favor. Consecration. Consecration. How is consecration possible? In Luke chapter 3, verse 22, Luke chapter 3, verse 22, God says of Jesus, You are my beloved son, and in you I am well pleased. Look at that word, you. You are my beloved son. It is an affirmation of ownership. It is an affirmation of acceptance, belonging, of love. God is saying, you belong to me. Amen. Hallelujah. You are completely, absolutely, and eternally mine. Every single being of you, every part of your being is mine. That's what the Father was saying. And God says the same to us today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, the Bible says, You were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. You were bought with a price. Turn to your neighbor and say, You have been bought by the blood of Christ. Amen. So when we know, when we know that we are not our own owners, we don't belong to you. Your gift is not yours. Your talent is not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. It was given to you so that you can steward it and serve God, glorify God through it. Can you say amen? Amen. It is not yours. When you know that your Savior has purchased you, when you know that you belong to God who is the judge of the universe, the almighty God, the God of the universe in whom is all authority, He's true to His word, there is an order and a system to the way He does things, we will realize we must align and submit to Him. It is not He who submits to us, we submit to Him. Can you say amen? And that's where your consecration becomes important. We submit to His will. To his ways and his purpose. So when you treat God as a spare tire, consecration is the last thing in your, in your mind. It's the last thing in your mind. There's no desire to follow God and do his will and glorify him. Because we are living for ourselves. It's only in times of crisis that we come seeking him. But when we see God as our steering wheel, we understand that we must submit to him all the time we will only go where he drives us to we will only go where he takes us to can you imagine if if god is a driver of your vehicle he will take you to all the rock shows during the hornbill festival this time will he will he huh will he yes or no but will you Go where he takes you. Don't go to all those carnal parties, fleshly parties where there's immoral lifestyle. And you say, oh, I'm going like Jesus. I'm just going to befriend them. Yeah, but you are getting spoiled in the process. So if you're not strong enough, you should not be going. Jesus went to turn them like him. You are going to become like them. <laughs> Amen. Third word, commitment. How many times did the enemy come to tempt Jesus? Three times. But Jesus overcame those three times. That means he was committed to his decision to follow God. Commitment is the state of being dedicated to a cause or an activity. Commitment is the action, the state of being dedicated to an activity a decision or a cause you see making a decision is one thing sometimes it's easy to come to the front make a decision in a camp in a seminar conference we make a decision to follow god yes staying committed to that decision is a whole different ball game this is where many christians falter jesus committed openly by being water baptized. Water baptism is an open declaration of an inward faith. 
He obeyed the leading of the Spirit. He consecrated himself to God's purposes. 40 days of fasting. It must have been difficult. It must have been trying. He was in the wilderness. There was no fleshly comforts. And maybe he did not experience or see anything from God in those 40 days. It is in that moment Satan comes to tempt him. See, you must always watch the times when you are hungry. Amen. Nagas, at least that language you understand. Be careful when you are hungry. All right? Be careful when you are physically tired, when you are financially broke, when you are lonely, when you are depressed, when you feel like everyone has left you. That is when your commitment is tested by the tempter. It is when God seems to be delaying 40 days and God did not show up. See, Saul was waiting for Samuel to come. Six days he didn't come. Samuel said, after seven days I'm coming. But Saul could not wait. And there was pressure from all his people. So instead of waiting for Samuel, he sacrificed before Samuel came. And Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because of this, the kingdom is taken away from you. Amen. You see, it is on those moments when God seems to be delaying. When you're praying for opportunity, but no opportunity. You're praying for breakthrough, but no breakthrough. You're praying for doors to open, no doors to open. You're praying and the prayers are not being answered. And in those moments, the enemy will come and whisper and say, Oh, it's all false. All this faith thing, all this prosperity thing, it's all nonsense. Nothing will happen. And usually through the suggestion of a good friend. Oh, you're serving in church all years. It is useless. And those are the times where I have seen again and again, the difficult times, Christians abandon their obedience and their consecration and their commitment. They abandon in those difficult moments. They fail to stay committed to the beliefs and the decisions. They give up. See, it was only after the test after the 40 days, and then the enemy came, Satan three times, tempted Jesus, he overcame. Only after that, the angels came and ministered to Jesus. It is usually after the test of commitment, God shows up. God shows up after the trying time. God shows up after the test. Why am I going through all these tests and trials all the time? Because it is strengthening your faith. It is testing your obedience, your consecration, and your commitment. And when you pass the test, God will send provision. God will open the doors. Can you say hallelujah? Don't give up. Stay committed. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay committed. How is commitment possible? Only when you know the love of God. The love of God. God loves you. That means He has not forsaken you in your most difficult times. When you are broke, He has not forsaken you. Will you be committed when you are broke? See, that's a test. What you're going through is not permanent. It is temporary. But the lessons you learn are permanent. Permanent. 